Chapter 19 Review When reviewing this chapter, make sure you go back and understand the different components of the conduction system and understand why they are there. For instance, the bundle of his and the bundle branches serve an important function. Be sure to go over these two equations here and understand what all of the values mean. If I were to tell you that ESV were to increase, you should be able to tell me exactly what happens to stroke volume and cardiac output. Later, we'll add one more layer so that we can discuss the homeostatic regulation of blood pressure. Lastly, go over the stages of the contraction cycle and the waveforms on the EKG that are represented. The AV valves were large valves between the atria and ventricles. Because they need to resist the force of the ventricular contraction, they required extra structural help in the form of papillary muscles and the chordae tendinae. The semilunar valves, on the other hand, merely need to resist the force of gravity, so they do not have the extra support of muscles and tendons. If one of the valves cannot shut completely, then blood will be able to flow backwards during a heart contraction. This is called a heart murmur, based on the sound it makes under auscultation. The heart will have to work harder to compensate for this inefficient blood flow. Some people who are born with a particular type of atrial fibrillation are trained to either do the Valsalva's maneuver or to do a carotid massage in order to inhibit their fibrillation. This goes back to the function of the baroreflex. Baroreceptors on either the carotid body or the aorta can detect elevation in pressure when squeezed externally. This will send information up to the brain and the medulla oblongata will activate parasympathetic fibers on the cardio-inhibitory center, which travel via the vagus nerve back down to the heart and dump acetylcholine onto the SA node, which hyperpolarizes the heart, making it less likely to fire action potentials, which can stop this type of fibrillation. The cardiac myocytes are connected to each other by intercalated discs, which have gap junctions, which means that electrical signals can pass from one cell to the next. In a normal contraction cycle, the wave of contraction should only spread in one direction, because as cardiac myocytes contract, the ones behind them should be inactivated. A heart attack can do damage to some of the tissue in the heart meaning that these cells may not fire action potentials, but they also may not inactivate. This could allow for an action potential to spread backwards, and the wave of contraction could bounce in random directions rather than in the uniform direction that we like. For this reason, if somebody has a heart attack, but they feel better afterwards, they still need medical attention because they are now at a higher risk for an arrhythmia. The preferred method for stopping an arrhythmia is an AED. This is a device that will shock all of the cells, causing all of the ones that can depolarize to do so, and then they will all inactivate uniformly. This will stop a random signal from bouncing around the rest of the healthy tissue, allowing the SA node to resume its normal coordinated contraction cycle. If the damaged tissue is still there and has not been replaced with scar tissue, there is still an increased risk of another arrhythmia starting at some point. On the EKG waveform, the P wave represented atrial depolarization the QRS complex ventricular depolarization, and the T wave ventricular repolarization. The PR interval represented the time that the signal started at the SA node until it had been delayed by the AV node. The QT interval represented the time between when the ventricles contracted 
until they relaxed. These two time periods should not change even with increased demand for oxygen. We still need time for the ventricles to fill up with blood, and we still want the ventricles to squeeze completely. Therefore, when heart rate increases, it must be the time between the end of the T wave and the beginning of the next P wave that is compressed.